Hello, everyone. Welcome to our Facebook Live today. It's great to see so many of you in the audience from all over the world. I see Sandra from Southern Ireland and Madge from Pennsylvania, Christy from Texas. Uh, we have Shelly from Wyoming, uh, Billy from Dublin. So great to see you all. Sorry, I can't list where all of you are from because it's really uh, so interesting to see so many of you from all over. So welcome, great to see you all. Thank you for joining us today. We have a fabulous session lined up for you. Today we have Thomas McKenty, a great friend of my heritage. He'll be joining us. And before we get to that, I have a couple of announcements to let you all know about different things going on here at my heritage. So the first thing that we have going on is starting tomorrow on October 29th, we have free death obituary uh, records here at my heritage, and that'll be from the 29th until the 2nd of October, a uh, second of November, sorry, the 29th of October until the 2nd of November. And um, in light of that, actually, we have a Facebook Live happening next week with our very own genealogy expert Daniel Horowitz and that will be on November 2nd while the records are still free that's on Monday and we will be talking about what you can gain from these vital records and how important they are to researching your family history so don't miss that one and uh, those records will be free for all of the for the whole weekend of Halloween so uh, in order to access them, just go to myheritage.com slash Halloween, and that begins tomorrow. So besides for that, in today's session, we will also be giving away a My Heritage Complete Plan to one lucky winner. Uh, for anyone who has joined our live sessions before, you know the drill. And for those of you that are new, um, in order to enter, all that you have to do is just leave us a nice comment in the comment section. We would like to hear from you. Tell us what you have learned using My Heritage. Um, and to, since today is going to be all about photos, uh, it, it will be especially fitting if you tell us about how you how you have liked the My Heritage photo tools. So tell us if you've used the My Heritage Photo Enhancer or My Heritage in Color. Uh, these are two fantastic, fantastic tools um, that help you enhance and colorize your photos. And uh, we'd love to hear if you've used them, if you've tried them out, uh, and what you've gained from them. So please let us know in the comments section. And at the end of today's question session, we will be giving away one free complete plan. And that gives you access to all um, the 12.6 billion historical records on my heritage, an unlimited family tree size, as well as complete access to our photo tools that I mentioned just before. So really a really a fantastic, fantastic prize and uh, good luck to everyone entering. And we hope that that um, the person that wins really takes advantage of this uh, fantastic family history tool. So now I would like to introduce our guest. We have with us Thomas McKenty, a dear friend of ours at My Heritage. We've had him on the show quite a number of times before, um, and it's always so so lovely to have him. So let me just bring him on here. Hello, Thomas. How are you? Hey, Esther. How are you doing? Good. Thanks. I'm so glad to have you. It's always a pleasure. Great. We're, we're so glad to learn about um, all the different scanning tips that you have for us, especially, um, you know, especially as the holidays near and maybe maybe some of us will will get some new photos from family members. It's such a fantastic time to, to learn about this. Yeah, it is. I think the timing is perfect, especially some of us are undergoing more stricter COVID restrictions like here in Chicago. So I'm setting up all of these scanning projects for while I'm spending the winter indoors. Fantastic. Fantastic. So should I bring up your slides? Yeah, that'd be great. Okay, here we go. There we go. Okay, perfect. Uh, and I just want to say welcome to everyone. Uh, my name is Thomas McKenty. I'm with genealogybargains.com. I'm in Chicago, in Illinois, in the United States. And, uh, you know, scanning photos is becoming more and more important to everyone right now. Uh, I think because of the pandemic, we're finding we're working at home, we're doing more things at home. Uh, and this is one of those things that I, we tend to put off. 
I don't know about you, but I have what's called the box and it is a cardboard banker's box and things would just get thrown in there. Anything from photos to scrapbooks to everything, negatives, slides, videotapes, uh, not good for the condition of those items, but also I kept telling myself, I got to scan these. And that's really important also. What if there was a flood or a fire or something to that effect? Uh, I'm a steward for my family history. I'm a steward for my family photos. I want to make sure they're preserved uh, and that I leave a legacy uh, with all of this work that I'm doing. So the first thing that I usually do is I create some type of plan. Uh, you know, I just don't sit here with Oops, there, there it is. Uh, I just don't sit here with my scanner and just take something out of the box and then flip it on uh, the scanner. So you need to take inventory. What do you have? Uh, what are you up against? Do you have the scanner that's right for it? Uh, if you've got slides or negatives are you or home movies, what are you going to do with those? Uh, look at the equipment that you're buying as well. Uh, if you have an all in one printer, that's what we call them. They used to have a fax machine. Some of them still do. Uh, a printer as well as a scanner. That's perfect. I have a dedicated scanner. I have one that will accommodate slides and negatives and I'll show you that in a minute. So go ahead and you know think about the equipment. Do you have the right equipment for your project? Set your standards. And that's what I, I'm saying is what resolution are you going to scan at? 600 DPI, 300 DPI. Uh, how are you going to save the files? That's TIFF files, TIFF, uh, or are you going to save them as JPEGs? So you have all these things that you need to put in place. Uh, set up a tracking tracking mechanism. Uh, you know, I want to know where did I leave off? So I'll leave a three by five note card saying, okay, this is the, the McKenty family reunion from 1955. Uh, and I've gotten halfway through the scans. Uh, also think about your file names. What are you going to name the files? Are you going to be consistent in how you name the files? Uh, are you going to use surnames? Are you going to use dates? I'll show you the method uh, that I do. Uh, also with your files, once you get them digitized, these photos, uh, where are you going to store them? And also, are you going to back them up? Uh, what if you had a crash on your hard drive? You, you want to make sure that you have some type of backup. Uh, then once you get that plan together, you're going to take inventory. You're going to look at that ugly box and say, oh, this is what I have. I've got to sort all of these and organize all of these so I can start scanning. Now, the way that I do that is also I prepare my workspace. I just had my lunch here and I'm like, no, I've got to clean this. I can't have any, any messes here while I'm working and scanning. Also, I, archivists tend to respect the order of the original collection. What that means is if, if I got something from my great grandmother and it was a whole box of photos, she may have organized it for a reason. So a lot of times people will do that. They'll just start there. They won't sort through them and they'll keep it in that order. Check the condition. What I tend to do is triage. I look at things and I say, okay, these are in really bad condition. These need to be scanned right away uh, and then put in some type of archival folder. The other one is sort and organize in like groups. One, it, you can do that. There are some people that don't like to follow the original order of the collection. That's fine. Go ahead and sort them and organize in like groups. Oversized portraits, you might want to save those for uh, one big scanning batch, et cetera. Also, what are you going to do with duplicates? And also what I call bad photos, photos that are out of focus but they still might have a clue written on the back. Uh, what are you going to do with those things? So have a plan for those. Usually what I do is I, I put those aside. Those are like lowest of low priority and they go in a special container. Also, if you've got slides and negatives, I urge you to invest in a very small slide viewer or negative viewer. They sell them for about $20 US and this way, Instead of wasting time scanning things that you don't want, you can say, oh, this is a good slide. I want this. This is a bad slide. I don't want this. Uh, and then basically I, I inventory and store everything and I've got my new box ready for me to start scanning. So now this is the part where I have told Esther I'm going to stop sharing 
and I am going to, let's go over here. Uh, I'm going to go here and I'm going to turn my camera and show my scanning. So Esther, if everything's okay, uh, I just hope that it, it looks okay. And I'm watching it on my, uh, on my iPhone as well. So this is an Epson, V as in Victor 600 Perfection Scanner. Uh, this runs about 225 US. It is just a scanner. It is not wireless. It does not have Bluetooth. It does not have a place for an SD card. It's not that fancy. So the first thing is though, what I wanna do is one of my tips is to always clean your scanner. So I'm gonna lift up the platen here and I'm gonna actually use a microfiber cloth to clean. Uh, I already looked up the manufacturer's instructions and they said no alcohol, no Windex. So I wouldn't wanna really ruin uh, my equipment that I had spent good money on. Now, the other thing is you might see me here uh, I am actually putting on white gloves. These are cotton archival medium uh, gloves and not medium size. These are medium in terms of texture. Now, the reason why I'm going to put them over here and I bought them in a pack of a dozen. Uh, there's a good reason for this. When you're working photographs, you have to be very careful about any oils or dirts that get on the photograph itself. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start with a photo. This is a photo of my second great aunt, uh, and her name was Anna McPhillips. And right now I'm writing a story about her. This is from about 1923 in the Bronx, New York. Uh, and she was killed uh, when she was pinned against a wall by a runaway bus. Uh, and so I'm unraveling that whole story. Now, what I want to do is I want to scan this. So I'm going to put this right on the scanner. I always put it on the edge as well. There's a reason for that. If you do it like this, guess what? You're going to have to use editing software to straighten it out and to crop it and everything. So why not? And just don't do it like that either. Do it over to the corner and put it right there. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to my software program here on the Epson scan. Please work. Yay. And I'm going to go ahead and scan. And while it's doing that, and now this is a little bit noisy. Uh, it is uh, a little bit slow, but I am scanning at a high DPI. I recommend 300. I'm using 600 DPI. Uh, and then when it's all said and done, it will come up on my software, which it just did. And I'll show that in a minute. But I do wanna show you a few other things as well. The other thing is always, scan the back of the photo. There's a note here. It says, Mrs. Morris Austin, Anna Austin, Dorothy and Eugene's mother. I was lucky enough to know my Aunt Dorothy. Uh, and uh, so this, this is part of that clue. So of course, I'm gonna try and I'm gonna scan the back. Now, one of the things that I always do as well is when I go ahead, I'm gonna go to my software over here. Where are you guys? There we are. Uh, one of the things I urge you is still scan it if you, even if you don't think you can see anything on the back of the photo. You really never know uh, what you might find, especially if you run it through the MyHeritage enhancement tool. Uh, you're going to get a little bit more detail there. Okay. So the other thing that I, a few things that I want to show off here is uh, I want to show off how the Epson. Uh, scanner works in terms of those slides and negatives in case you're interested. I didn't want to have to have a separate device for slides and negatives. So what happens is it has these what I call templates and you see you can fit slides in here, negatives in here, and it basically gets, uh, you know, tagged in here, inserted uh, in different ways. And that's why I, I really purchased this. To me, this is more of an all-in-one scanner. The other thing that I want to tell you is some people say, well, I want to write the name on the back of the photo, or I want to write in, on, on the photo itself. What I have here is a piece of acrylic. Uh, it, it's, it's a little bit sturdy. You can get this usually at a hobby store. Uh, and what I can do is I can put this on here with a dry erase marker. And I'm going to say here, uh, Anna Austin, 
just like that. And what I would do is I would flip it over like this and go ahead and scan that way. And that way it would come out uh, scanned with that information. That's one way to do it. Of course, here I am now, I can't pick up anything <laughs> without uh, with the gloves, but then it just should wipe off pretty easily. The other thing also, one of the things that I know is gonna come up in the questions is this, I'll take these gloves off now, uh, maybe two things, is what do you do with those magnetic albums? So what I did, and this is what I urge, I know it looks like some weird dental experiment. These are what are called archival spatulas. And what it is, is now with magnetic albums, remember those horrible things from the 70s, what I prefer to do is put the whole page on the scanner and not take them out. But if I think that there's valuable information, uh, there are a variety of spatulas that you can use to try and dislodge. Uh, now, uh, to, another thing is these are actually chemical uh, spatulas for chemistry. Uh, they're much cheaper than the archival and they're the same thing. Uh, to do that. The other thing is also with magnetic albums is, is you really, I think it's easier to scan them that way. The other solution is use non-waxed, unwaxed dental floss and drag it across the uh, back of the photo if that's really important to you. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come back and say hi. And, uh, and now what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually use that photo file uh, so I'm going to go ahead and share again, Esther, and share and go to my slides. And there we are. And we're going to go over the tips, more of the tips uh, for scanning and digitization projects. One of the things that's very easy is to get overwhelmed. You can get overwhelmed with so much to do. Also, it, it can be very emotional. Uh, and so a lot of times I'm like, okay, I will cry over this photo, photo later tonight when I'm on the sofa, et cetera, okay? So that's really, really important. Uh, that's the way that I approach it. And then you're gonna have self-doubts. Are you sure you're doing it right? Uh, I do sometimes, I'm thinking, okay, it's a scanner set up, is it set up for color, even though it's a black and white photo, is it 600 or 300 DPI? Uh, you, you can, you're actually doing better than you really think you are. Uh, it's not that difficult if you follow some of these tips and you just basically approach it with a plan. Where are we here? There we are. Triage your scanning. So what I do is high priority items that are really breaking down. Then I do the medium items and I do them grouped. I tend to do oversized things separately, uh, more modern uh, photos what are called cart divists or CDVs, the ones that are on heavy cardboard, tin types. So I, I do them into different levels, high, medium, and low. Also, don't forget to clean your scanner. Uh, it's very easy. I clean it every time with my fiber uh, microfiber cloth. Please use archival gloves. One of the reasons is, is uh, you know, you can go and get your hair dyed like I did and it's green and you don't realize and you're playing with your hair and the next thing is you're touching a photo and guess what you get all over the photo. Uh, so also, if you're gonna scan metals and jewelry, maybe you have metals or ribbons, uh, what I do is it's very frequently when it's a three dimensional item, light will seep in from the scanner. I have a blue velvet uh, piece of fabric that I put over it to block out the light. Line it up, as I said before, put it in the corner according to where your scanner sets it so that you don't have to worry about cropping later on. Don't forget to scan multiple items in one pass. I have a lot of these 1930 and 40 uh, miniature photos, they've got to be like uh, three by four. They've got a crinkled edge around them. They were common for the brownie camera that was very popular. Well, I will put four or five of those on the scanner at one time, scan it all at once, and then split it up into different files. It's the best use of your time. Again, man magnetic albums, I, I just don't fool with them. Uh, for the most part, a lot of mine were old pol Polaroids from parades in upstate New York, and I knew there wasn't anything valuable on the back because it was black on the back. There was no real way to write on it. So I just scanned the whole page. 
Don't forget to scan both sides of a photo. Also, go for high resolution scans. Uh, as long as you have the storage, so a 600 DPI photo like the one that I just scanned uh, would basically, uh, it, it, it'll be 25, 30 megabytes, and you should have room for that. Also, don't forget to rename the digital file. So that's what I'm going to do in a minute. I will show you what I do at the end point. In fact, this might be a good time to stop this. And I'm going to go and uh, let's see where I'm going to go here. Okay, I'm going to share my screen again, Esther. And I basically want to show my software. There we go. Uh, and you should be seeing this. If you're not, we Esther, actually, you see it? Yeah, we don't see your screen. Would you mind just sharing it once more? Sure. Okay, great. Oh, there we go. There we go. Fantastic. There we go. Okay, oh, perfect. And no, it's, it's actually showing the wrong window. Okay. Um, let me stop sharing. Hold on. I'm going to go to this window, then I'm going to go to you, and I'm going to share the screen. Sorry, folks. We'll we'll get it right in a second. There. Oh. And are you? No, it's, it's you're not. It's, no, it's okay. showing the uh, the B Live window. Okay, that's fine. Then I'll just go back to the slides. I apologize, folks. I'm really sorry. Uh, let me go here, and then are you seeing the slides or not? Uh, yes, let me put okay. them in. Here we go. Okay, great. Okay, perfect. Uh, so the other thing is, what what once you're done doing that, as I said, scan multiple items in one pass. Don't tamper with magnetic albums. Scan both sides. Uh, go for those high-resolution scans. Don't forget to rename the digital file. Very often when you scan a file, uh, uh, scan a photo, it, your scanner will assign it a name like uh, image 001. So what I do is I really try and come up with a name that describes the item, a file name. So on the one that I just had, I would say McPhillips, Anna, uh, about 1923. Uh, and then I would, you know, I would leave it at that. Uh, but do a descriptive name on a file. That's always better. Also, this is what I do. I scan at a high resolution as a TIFF format, T-I-F-F. -F. That is one of the best archival formats. Then what I do is I name that the original file. Then I save a copy of that as a JPEG. That JPEG is a smaller compressed version, totally workable. I can use it on a variety of projects, even at MyHeritage. But the thing is, it's easier to handle, and I always have that original in my storage on my hard drive uh, in case there's a problem down the road and I need to get back to the original uh, and, I, and I don't want to scan it again. Also think about annotating your scans. Use that acrylic. Uh, use a piece of acrylic with a dry eraser marker if that's what you want to do or you can do it also digitally afterwards after you scan it using a photo uh, editing software. Don't forget to use the MyHeritage photo tools. Uh, one of the things that I do, and I'm hoping that I'll be able to show this on screen, is I'm going to upload the photo that I just scanned. We'll run it through the enhancer. We'll take a look at the MyHeritage in color, and then we'll order mixed tiles based on what I have as well. If you haven't heard about the mixed tiles, those are really super. Don't forget about metadata. Metadata is a way for you, if you right-click over a file, and then you go to Properties, you can actually add things like a copyright statement. You can add a comment up to, I think, 10,000 characters, and that gets embedded digitally with the file. Uh, I also have, I recommend the MyHeritage mobile app. It has a photo scanner in it, and you can actually put the photo right on your desk and then scan it, and it would go up to MyHeritage photos into your photo album, and then you can actually uh, work your magic with the tools there. Don't forget to back up your scans. I'm a big proponent of the 321 uh, backup program, which is three different backups, two different types of media, and one of them has to be off site, meaning in the cloud. What else do I have here? And then don't, uh, don't forget to order your mixed tiles via MyHeritage. The nice thing with the ordering it through MyHeritage is I, I think the colors are perfect. 
uh, running it through enhancer and, and in, in color, I'll show you what I've been doing with the mixed tiles. So I'm going to go ahead and stop sharing. Uh, let me get back here, Esther, and I want to go ahead and show in my heritage and share my screen. So hold on a minute. Let's try that again and see. Hopefully it'll work this time. Oh, there we go. I believe okay. it's okay. Let me just put it in the stream now. Great. Perfect. Okay, is it there? Yeah, perfect. Okay, perfect. So this is my album here at My Heritage. I'm going to go ahead and upload that photo that I just scanned. Uh, and I'm going to go here and hopefully, where are my scanned items? Oh, gosh. Probably somewhere. Don't you just hate it? I'm the same way. Uh, I've gotten all my scanned and I just don't know where it went. No. Okay. Well, I'm going to upload this for an example. Uh, what, wait a minute. Hold on. I want to do it the right way. Select the files. And I'm going to go ahead and just go to my genealogy folder where I have these photos. And that should be an Austin photo. And there it is right there. OK, I'm going to go ahead and upload that photo. I'm going to view the album right there. And then I'm going to work with the enhancer uh and usually i mean it's amazing what kind of job this will do with these types of photos and look at this oh my gosh look at how much clearer that is now i don't know if i want to colorize this personally so this is my trick i usually download just the enhanced photo and then i'll try my magic at coloring uh I, you know sometimes i love this sepia tone on this so then the next thing that i'm going to do folks is this i'm going to go back to my album and this is what I really love. And these are these are uh, tiles. This is my mother-in-law who recently passed away in February. Uh, and uh, my in-laws were married for 62 years. So what I did is I went like this, is I went through and I'm checking all of these photos that I've already put through. And so one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, here we go, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. And then I'm going to come up here and say print as wall art. And if you haven't seen mixed tiles, this is amazing. So you can go through this process and then uh, it, it tells you that, you know, their mixed tiles is working with my heritage and you can go ahead and order these items. Uh, you continue, uh, they go through and, and they want your email and everything. But the uh, discounts are absolutely amazing. I believe it's 50% off if you buy 12 of them. Uh, and so what I want to do is I just want to come back on camera here. And uh, Esther, you, you want to talk about mixed tiles as well, right? But I want to show everyone here what these are. And so I just took one right here off of my wall in my office. It is light. It is foam. Uh, it's got an adhesive here that does not leave a mark on the wall, and I'm able to take it on and off several times. Uh, the shipping is free, which I love, uh, and so I just did a gift of 12 of these for my father-in-law's 89th birthday. Uh, and so, uh, but it is, it, it just, it's great. It's absolutely great. Esther, are you there? Yes, I am. I also yeah ordered some and they came so quickly yeah. and I have to say it's just fantastic as a gift I actually yeah. um, told my mother-in-law that I'm working on a photo project and I asked her to scan in some old photos yeah. um, and unbeknownst to her I took those photos I put them into my heritage on our family site and I enhanced right. and colorized them some of them I left black and white to right. preserve the authenticity yeah. um, you know some of them I felt would look a little bit better in color so I colorized them um, and you know just the enhancer it just makes the, it just brings out so many details in the photos um, so you know my mother-in-law's uh, parents wedding and you know right. just, just some fantastic, fantastic black and white photos. Yeah. Um, 
And then they arrived at her door and right at her front door. And she was just so thrilled. Um, yeah. And then she said, you know, I have even more photos that I can give you. <laughs> It is. A, it becomes kind of addictive. Uh, the thing is, the shipping, because I have an unboxing video up there out on the Internet and showed my father-in-law opening the box. And it's a sturdy box. Uh, they're neatly packed. And uh, he was amazed. He couldn't believe the color of these, you know, and right now they're in his dining room, all of them. Uh, and it's just it's a great gift. What I'm going to urge people, though, Esther, is uh, especially here in the United States, do this now. Get your order in early because, you know, they're saying that we may have some shipping delays towards the end of the year, towards the holidays. And so you want to take care of this now. Uh, and so the scanning is probably the worst part. The, the most fun is actually doing the uh, tools on MyHeritage and then ordering the mixed tiles. Exactly, exactly. Yeah. No, and, and as you say, best to kind of take advantage of the time that you may have now and, yes. um, and not be too late because you don't want to miss out. It's, it's just such a great gift for the holidays. Yeah. yeah. So I'm, I'm taking questions. If you want to relay questions to me, that would be perfect. I'd love to, you know, do that. And in the meantime, what I'm going to do is I'm going to share the rest of my slides uh, so that you can see them uh, right there. So I just wanted to put up my email up there, Esther, uh, so people can contact me if they have any questions. A lot of times questions don't come to you until afterwards. Uh, a little bit about me. Uh, my hair is not always green, just so you know. Here's a photographic evidence. Uh, yeah, and also, if you wouldn't mind, I've got a lot of free cheat sheets. I think I'm up to today's the 28th. I have 28 brand new cheat sheets over at genealogybargains.com. Uh, so, but I really appreciate this opportunity. Any questions, Esther? Okay, so yeah, let's take some questions. Um, first, I just, uh, I, I see a couple about um, the mixed tiles. So I just want to go back to that. Another um, advantage um, besides just using the MyHeritage Photo Enhancer and MyHeritage in color when you uh, purchase the mixed tiles from MyHeritage, there's also exclusive uh, discounts for MyHeritage yeah. users um, that order mixed tiles through MyHeritage. So um, I believe it's up to 50% off if you order a certain amount. Well, if you order 12, it's 50%. And then if well, you order right. eight, and then if you order six, so there's different stepped discounts. Yeah, so it's really a great price. They're not expensive um, and and so lightweight, you know, even um, even if you're sending them to somebody who's a little bit older, they'll be able to put them up themselves. Yeah. It's just yeah. a sticky, it's just a sticky back um, adhesive. And they and, come off um, easily. They come off easily. They go back on. Exactly. So, yeah. so easy to use um, and to put up for anyone. So, yeah. Um, yeah, so they don't need to call a handyman to go and, and put them up in their house. So just another good, good thing to know. Um, yeah. So we'll take some questions before we get to the questions. I just want to remind everyone that at the end of the questions, we'll be giving away a MyHeritage Complete Plan to one lucky winner. So let us know um, how you've used MyHeritage, how it's helped you, uh, if you've tried the MyHeritage photo tools. If you've ordered mixed tiles through MyHeritage, we'd love to hear what your experience was like, if if, uh, if you've gifted them to someone, if they've enjoyed it so far. So so do let us know. Um, and, and so that you know, all the links are in the comment section. Um, at the very beginning, we put a link to the handout for today's session and you can take a look at that again um, it's on the MyHeritage education site the MyHeritage knowledge base so um, that's up there um, and we'll, we have also put a link to the blog post explaining about the mixed tiles that yeah. you can order through MyHeritage so a few different things that you can go and take a look at um, and look into afterwards so yeah. let's take a few questions now um, from the audience. I know that we got quite quite a bunch. So uh, we'll take the first one from Marguerite. And she asks, if you scan a bunch of photos at the same time, then do you have to crop each of them? Yeah, so what I do is I scan, maybe I have five photos on the one uh, on the scanner, scan it, save it as an original in TIFF, then I will make five copies as JPEGs, I'll call it JPEG 1, JPEG 2, 3, 4, 5. I have to crop each one, unfortunately. Uh, or it depends on your photo editing uh, program. I'm using a variety of different ones. The thing is, sometimes you can just take the image with all five 
and then just cut out as a selection and do a save as a new photo. It really depends on your photo editing software. Uh, right now I'm using Snagit, uh, which I use for screen captures and doing a lot of graphics. I've used Microsoft Photo Editor, Photos, Paint, uh, but they all work differently. But yeah, you will have to do some cropping for each one. Okay, we have a question here from Michelle, and she says, question for Thomas on organizing photos by family. Yeah. Say I have my dad's side and then my mom's side, but then our family and photos of everyone. Trying to yeah. organize by name can become difficult. Do you have any tips for her? Yeah, so usually when I do individuals, I always I start with the surname in all caps, like my mother's uh, maiden name was Austin, A-U-S-T-I-N. Then I would say Jacqueline, uh, and then I would try and put in a date on the photo and a description. If it's one person, I might mention the place. Uh, remember, you know, I remember the days, Esther, when we had eight characters in DOS for a file name, uh, and now I think it's 244, but you don't want something so long that it cuts off on the screen. Now, if it's a group photo, like I have one of a family reunion uh, and it's different families, that's, yeah. So, you know, what's more important is that you be consistent with whatever method you come up with. I don't think there's any right or wrong way to name photos. Uh, it's just that you have to come up with a system that means something to you. Uh, my goal is when I look at a file, I should know what's in it before I click on it. and then. I can open it up. So that's how I work. Linda asks, when pictures are fading, how do you make them come out uh, good or at least better than, than they look already? Yeah, well, the first thing is I would scan them at the highest DPI that I can, like 600, uh, and work with a TIFF image. Uh, now, sometimes, uh, and then what I would do is I would definitely use, I would use the photo editing tools at MyHeritage. If you feel that those didn't work, uh, look at using uh, an Adobe program. In the handout, I believe I have a few different editing programs, many of which are free uh, that you could work with. Uh, it really depends. One is called VividPix, uh, and they have a, a free trial for 10 photos. Uh, it depends on the photo. It depends. But if you do the best possible scan, you're going to have more opportunities to actually increase uh, that density. You may have to do some manual fixing. You know, those auto auto buttons where it says, you know, auto, not auto correct, but auto adjust or auto color, sometimes they overcompensate. I wanna read out this nice comment yeah. that we received from Donna and she said, I've ordered the mixed tiles. I like that there's a variety of ways that it is framed. I don't know if we spoke about that, but um, you can choose a number of different frames, either frameless or as, as Thomas has right behind him, you can see. Um, and uh, Donna also says, the colors are brilliant. Only one of the four, she said, um, it makes a fine gift because it is so easy to hang. So yeah. thank you, Donna, and send us a picture. We'd love to see a picture of your mixed tiles hanging up and, and what photos you, you printed. So thank you for sharing. It's so nice to hear. Um, yeah. we, we'll take a couple more questions. We sure. have um, from Kathleen, she asks, what software are you using? The Epson Scan or something like ViewScan? I'm using Epson Scan. I'm using the software that came with the scanner. But what I did is ahead of time, I set my default settings. So I know that I, anytime I do a photo, I want it to be 600 DPI. I want the out to, output to be TIFF. So I tend to use that. I haven't found a need for, and I know ViewScan, I used to use it many years ago, uh, but uh, I haven't really found a need for, for the basic type of stuff that I'm doing uh, for family history type scanning. Uh, I think that what comes with your scanner is usually good enough. Ivy asks, do you have any recommendations for preparing a photo before scanning it? Yeah, the thing is, well, you want to be careful. Uh, one of the, there is something out there called uh, it, it's an archival eraser. It's a document eraser. 
please don't take a standard rubber eraser and start to do this. Uh, look for what's called an archival eraser. It's what archivists use. You want to test it in a little area if there's a lot of dirt or grime. But this is what I try and do. I try not to tamper with the physical photo, especially if it's fragile. I then go and look at what can my photo editing tools do. Uh, Adobe Photoshop uh, is the higher end or uh, Photoshop Elements will let me uh, patch up damaged areas. Uh, it, 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 is, it does take some skills, but I'm all for not tampering with the original as much as possible. The only time I would do is maybe use uh, an archival eraser to try and remove a little dirt. So true, not to mess with the, yeah. the original, that precious, that uh, precious photos and, yeah. and that photo that you had that you were scanning in today. What a, what a find. Wow. Yeah, I know. Quite lucky to have a, a treasure like that. So um, we have a question here from Tessa. She asks, should we save the files as PDF instead of JPEG? No. <laughs> PDFs, no, PDF is a proprietary, technically a proprietary format owned by Adobe. Uh, it's a compressed format. Uh, and it's really not a photo format. It's more of a document format. format. Uh, so what I do is I save as TIFF, uh, and that's one of the options on my scanning software. And then what I do is I take that file, I copy it, or I export it out to JPEG and I use JPEG as my working file, but I would not do PDFs. And let's see, we have Nanette asks, after scanning those lovely 70s magnetic albums, what are you then doing with the original physical album? Oh, uh, what to do with them? Yeah, I don't know. Part of me just wants to burn them. Uh, I mean, to me, I don't know. It's just it's one of those just sad, sad parts of uh, photography uh, and family photos. I probably will put them in uh, an archival box and just put them away in case I need them. Uh, I'm looking to retire in about five years and probably move to California desert. So I'm always downsizing. Uh, and, you know, the other thing is if it really now, not that you're going to have this in a magnetic album, but uh, Esther, what I've done with some really rare photos, I have scanned it. I have printed it out through a photo service. I put that one in my photo frame, and then I put the original either in my safe or I put the original and donate it to a, a historical society. You know, my lineage goes back to Rhode Island, 1628, New York in 1641. Uh, and so anytime I have photos of any of my descendants, sometimes the historical societies would want them. So think about that. Uh, the other thing is I forgot to mention, Esther, what about photo storage? Well, the oh, thing yeah. Is, yeah, well, the thing is, of course, you want to upload them to my heritage and it's a photo album. Uh, and then you want to connect them to people in your tree. But what I want to show off is I want to show off my new little gizmo. This is the size of a credit card, folks. It's a two terabyte solid state hard drive. Light, uh, it goes in the pocket. Uh, so I make sure that I have my photos backed up on here. This sells probably for about 289 US right now. Uh, the prices are coming down, uh, but it's amazing because it's also solid state, it's very quick. You don't have to wait to copy files, it's just like that, so. So small, wow! Yeah, yeah, I remember those old external hard drives. That oh, you I know, I know. Yeah, plug around. It's nothing like that anymore, and and yeah. it's so much bigger. So, yeah. so it just makes it so convenient to really be backing everything up externally, which is so so important. We all know exactly. Wow, fantastic! Um, so we'll just take one more question before we get to our winner for today. And I'm sorry we're not able to get to all these really fantastic. Um, questions. I know that yeah, there. You, you, you might want to repost the handout too. I know a lot of people are asking. So we'll do that. We will post Great. the handout again. And um, just so that you all know, also, uh, this Facebook Live, as well as all of our Facebook Lives you can watch, they're all still available on the My Heritage Facebook right. page. So you just go to the video section. You go to facebook.com slash myheritage under the video section, and they're all available there. So anyone who missed any part of this really, really informative session. Um, I know 
I got so many new tips that that piece of acrylic that was just yes. that's brilliant. I've never yeah. heard of that. And yeah. so, so smart. Just such a great idea. Yeah. So let's just take one last um, question. Uh, let's see. So, so many to choose from. Um, and I'll probably go in I'll go in after this and I'll answer some of the questions. So folks that are asking questions, I usually, you know me, Esther, I go back in and I'll answer questions like what kind of hard drive was that, et cetera. So, so which one were you going to ask? Okay. So we'll take from Diane and Diane asks, we have a large framed old family photo of a couple in a bubble or rounded glass frame. Any suggestions for digitalizing? Do you take it's it very, out? What do you do yeah, in that case? You have to take it out. You have to, on the curve, the, either the concave or convex frames, you have to. There's really no other way. Uh, I would personally take it someplace if you could locally to have it done professionally. If you are going to do it yourself, one of the resources I have in the handout is called Google Photo Scan. Now, I love the MyHeritage Photo Scanner on the app, but the Google Photo Scan lets you use your mobile device you take uh, sections of the photo. So you can go here, 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 you know, eight or 12 different sections and the software will stitch it together. Uh, it's a free program called Google Photo Scan. That's what I tend to do. I'm not a big fan of using the mobile phone. I, I have tremors in my hands as I get older, um, but more and more of these apps are making adjustments uh, in terms of that. So go ahead and try the MyHeritage mobile app and their photo scanner as well as Google Photo Scan for something like that. Okay, and now we'll get to the winner of today's complete plan on MyHeritage, the best plan that we have to offer, and that includes free access to 12.6 billion historical records, as well as unlimited family tree size and unlimited use of the MyHeritage Photo Enhancer and MyHeritage in Color that we spoke about today. So um, today's winner is Victoria Whitwell, and Victoria wrote us, through scanning my late great uncle's photo lost in World War II, I've been able to see clearer the detail of the collar patch and identify that he was in an Italian engineer's regiment. So thrilled. Thank you. What a nice, what a nice story to share with us. So thank you so much, Victoria. We'll be in touch with you through private message to claim your prize. And, and I think that's what's so special about these tools that uh, you can learn things that you didn't know before from your photos, notice all the details. It's just so, so fantastic. And we love hearing those stories. So thank you for sharing with us. And Thomas, thank you so much for being with us today. Thank you. Yeah, this was fun. So, and I have a lot of scanning projects set up for photos for the next, uh, cause I, I want to get mixed tiles. I have all these gifts I want to order. So uh, I have, you know, my in-laws side of the family, their, their cousins, everyone now wants a mixed tile now that I've done this. So yeah. <laughs> It's the gift that you can just keep scanning more yes. and then and then on to the next order and the next order. It's really exactly. such an easy thing to to do once you have the photos scanned in on the MyHeritage site. And yeah. um, so we really encourage you all to to go and try it. Go try the photo tools on MyHeritage and to try um, mixed tiles. And as it's a great gift for the holidays. Yeah. So um, we hope Thanks that you for this opportunity. It. Thanks, Esther, for doing Thank this. I appreciate so it. Thank you so much. Thank you for joining us. It's always a pleasure okay. to have you. And all right. we'll see you all later. Bye. Okay.